You are listening to WCOM LP Chapel Hill and Carborough 103.5 FM. You are locked in right now, and this is the Richard Brown Show. I am Richard Brown, and let me tell you a little about the show before we get started. Our show, this show is about taking ideas and turning those ideas into reality. And today what we're going to do is we're going to be talking with Chef Tim Kozart. And what he's going to do is talk about how we can be better as it relates to what we eat, how we eat, and how we go about preparing it. So um, I want to thank him for coming on. Thank you. I, I man, I appreciate it. I know it's I mean we've been having a we've been having some difficulty getting schedules together, but you know, part of that is because of some of the outside things going. So I wanna appreciate you coming on the show and uh, and sharing your expertise. I mean, you know, you do it up. So anytime, bro. Anytime. Okay. All right, so tell tell everyone again uh, a little bit about how you got into this and you know, and what you do. Oh, so actually, you know, I, I've been into this since probably I was eight years old. But, you know, being as it was back in the day, you know, culinary was not a big thing in terms of uh, how a career, you know, a career choice. So, you know, I was I was guided towards engineering and, 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 and uh, computers and whatnot. So I did that for like 15 years. Got tired of getting laid off. Got an opportunity to go back to school uh, for free, pretty much. And I, I said, I'm going to go back to something I love to do, you know. And so I've been doing that ever since, man. And so, what you know, what I try to concentrate on is fresh, local stuff, uh, you know, and, and bringing something new to, to our folks, you know what I'm saying, instead of the, the, the standard collard greens, fried stuff. I mean, that's great. You know, I grew up on it. I love it. But in terms of being a vehicle for us being healthy, that, that's not going to work. You know, and then there's just so much other food out there that we could, you know, partake in and we can prepare at home or we can go out to eat either way. And there's so much nicer, fresher things that we can do. So, you know, that's, that's what I concentrate on. Um, I'm, I'm primarily a personal chef, but I say I'm a personal chef that will cater. Because mm -hmm. uh, typically... <coughs> Excuse me. What, <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. What is what does that mean that you're a, pers a personal ship? Walk me through how somebody number one might uh, might acquire your skills and what you would do for them. Because you know, I don't know. At least I don't know many African Americans who make that call and say, "Yo, right, I need right. you to come to the house. I need you right, to do right, X, right. Y, and Z." Right. Well, um, in terms of, of, of of, of reaching me or whatever, you know, you can just email or whatever, standard business type deal. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of the training, there's a couple of directions you can go. Uh, a lot of a lot of chefs just come up through the ranks, you know, they might start out of dishwasher, move on up to my cook, move up to sous chef or lead line or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can go that direction or you can go to culinary school. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great culinary schools around. I mean, it's even in even on the uh, on the community college level, there's some great skills. You're learning the same thing. You learn how to saute. A saute is a saute at Wake Tech or at Johnson and Wales. It's still a saute. Mm -hmm. It's all about how you apply yourself. Mm -hmm. You know. And so, in terms of that, I, you know, I, I always recommend a culinary school type situation, just because it's the focus. You know, and then you kind of get your hands in a little bit of everything. You get your hands into some international. You get your hands into some baking. You you know, and so you learn. You're gonna learn the basic stuff. Every you know, no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. So then you can take that and kind of figure out what direction do I want to go? Do I want to go hotel work? Do I do I want to be an entrepreneur? Do I want to open a restaurant? Do I want to uh, work in fine dining? Do I do I want to do home cooking? So you know, you can kind of feel your way. And for me. Because I like being more intimate with the customer and giving them exactly what they want and exactly what they need, the personal chef route was good for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, and then, granted, I did do, I've done uh, hotel work, I've done restaurant work, I've done deli work, you know, so you have to do that work just to kind of get the skill set up, you know right, what I'm saying, right, and get right. your timing up. Because, like, with the personal chef deal, so like a, a typical personal chef day, you know, Richard calls me up, we, we sit down, 
we uh, go through a questionnaire and, and I find out exactly what Richard likes to eat, what's good for Richard. You know, what do you have uh, diabetes? Do you have weight issues? You know, what exactly are you trying to accomplish with this other than just me coming to the house to cook? Mm -hmm. So then we set that we, we, we set that up, find out our first cook date. In the first month or so, it's kind of us filling each other out. Hey, you know, I, I like the chicken, but I, I like the mine a little bit more uh, grilled. But I don't really like it. You know, saute, you know, so we, we worked the kinks out of it about that first month. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so I would get up, go to the grocery store, buy all your stuff that day, mm -hmm. come to the house, cook it, put it in containers, put labels on it, put directions on how to reheat it, uh, clean up the kitchen, then I'm out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a typical day for, for And that's a chef. setup for, now would you say, so when you, so when you make your relationship as a personal chef, are you saying I'm doing that two or three days out of the week or once a week and then that food's to last them for just what, one night or two nights? How does that work? It, it, it depends, depends, that's right. It just depends on, on uh, the deal we do. Like the average is going to be a family of four. I might come in on Monday, I'll cook from Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, then I have a weekend package if you want a full week. But generally, most people are gonna eat out on the weekends, and you know, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday they'll actually cook. Right. You know, that's the one day that people will cook these days. You know, people aren't cooking a lot these days, but they will do something on Sunday, generally, especially if they have a family. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, there's also a fresh package you can use where I come in twice a week. People don't like their food frozen. You know, so I might come in on a Monday and a Wednesday, or a Monday and a Thursday, mm -hmm. and I do it twice. But I just, you know, I just do it for the Monday, Wednesday, Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, and then. Thursday through the rest of the week. So it just depends. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. And talk, give me an example of specifically what you have cooked for folk and folks have been like, yeah, I'm feeling it. This is something new. This is something different. Something new, something different. Uh, it, interestingly, Richard, it, it's so funny because people really love real food. You just, but you just do it, you know, you might season it differently. Um, I have a Moroccan chicken that I do, um, a Moroccan beef, Moroccan pork, just the, the Moroccan spices is what the, they really like. Mm -hmm. um, I've even uh, brought out, there's a grain called quinoa. Um, you yeah. said, say it again? Quinoa. Quinoa? Yeah. And it's a, it's a whole grain and it, the texture is similar to, it. it you know, I, I can't really give you, a, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really fluffy. Uh, it's, and it's a really soft grain, and it actually looks almost like Velcro. Like if you could pull the pieces off of Velcro once mm -hmm. it's cooked, and uh, it's a great grain. It takes flavor. It takes, it takes flavor really nice. And folks will see it and like and look like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want it, but once they taste it, they're really like, okay, mm -hmm. okay, I can do it. Especially when you pair it with something like the Moroccan spices. Which is gonna, you know, the Moroccan spices are gonna take you. They're not gonna necessarily have, uh, you know, the hot, like the heat, you know, gotcha, like that, like, like say maybe a jerk, mm -hmm. but you're gonna have uh, a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of curry, you mm -hmm. know. A little bit more subtle. From, right, a little bit more subtle. subtle. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like if you've ever had Indian food before, mm -hmm. or it's that type of feel to the Moroccan, um, North African. Uh, uh, type type meals and that and they use a lot of grains and, and you know and so um, that's one thing that people are really like okay I I, I, I can eat this again <laughs> right come back come back I, when you say that one of the questions that pops up in my head is this idea of do you have to introduce new recipes differently to your white clients than you do your black clients or is it pretty much you based it on the individual relationship that you built before? I generally base it on the individual relationship. Uh, I will say for the most part, uh, people that call me are pretty open. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. That's one, I'm, I'm not expensive, but I'm not cheap either. Mm -hmm. So that alone is gonna uh, just, just change the, the nature of the client. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things I really like to do is introduce folks 